motorists are trapped in their vehicles when a surprise flood turns roadways into rivers. Basically could have killed many people if the cars just started to move. The waters rise so quickly that drivers are unable to escape. Among those stranded in the fast-moving current are a mother with her nine-year-old son. I can't stand this thing! I need help! Ma'am, we're on our way. December 23rd, 2008. An aging water main ruptures in Bethesda, Maryland, sending a massive wall of water rushing down a busy road and turning the morning commute into a nightmare for drivers. Firefighters at Station 10 are just pulling out, unaware a critical situation is developing nearby. They immediately get stuck in traffic backed up from the flood. We actually thought we might have had a trash truck or something on fire, and that's when we were met with about a four foot high wall of water to hit the front of the fire truck. It hit the fire truck so hard, we actually thought it was going to blow the window right out of the fire truck. Accustomed to the role of rescuers, the firefighters now find themselves in a precarious position. For the first three or four minutes, we weren't the rescuers. We almost needed rescued ourselves. From the base of the hill, they see several cars trapped in the raging waters. I made the initial radio transmission to our emergency communications and said, we're going to need water rescue, some manpower. We knew time was not on our side at that point. The 66-inch water main break is pouring thousands of gallons of water down the hill. The firefighters need to act fast. Our plan of attack was to use the fire truck as sort of a barrier between us and any debris that was coming down the road and try to make a little bit of a safe area for us. The rescuers fight their way upstream to reach the first car. Got to the lady and she was pretty panicked. And when I got to the car, opened the door up, she had water inside of her car. And I remember her looking at me and she was screaming and she said, I can't swim. And I kind of joked and told her, I can't swim either, but you know, we're not planning on swimming. He manages to get the woman to safety. Meanwhile, another response team has arrived on the scene and is attempting a rescue from the top of the hill. The water was moving extremely fast, faster than I'd ever seen it move on a roadway before. We guesstimated at 30 knots, which is probably 40 miles an hour. They decide to try a tricky rescue maneuver by boat. When we do this type of operation, we have what we call a high line. And what we do is we tie a, a large rope between a telephone pole and a large tree. And then we use the pulley system to lower the boat down. The rescue efforts are tense and they nearly capsize in the frigid water. The water was really moving. We were swept off our feet two or three times as we tried to get down close enough to get in the boat. They're eventually successful, but the firefighters are struggling to reach the mother and her young son, still trapped in their vehicle. She's moving backwards. The water needs to wash her way out. Are you out of the water now, ma'am? No. He's still coming. The firefighters battled the currents for several agonizing minutes. The force of the water uh, is tremendous. At 18 inches or so, it was taking your feet right out from underneath of you. The amount of debris that was coming down the street was probably the biggest hazard at that point. I mean, you had two and three hundred pound chunks of rocks and stuff coming at you. You had to kind of dodge them, make sure they didn't take you out. With the water levels rising and without further resources, they're forced to retreat. That's when we saw the Maryland State Police helicopter coming in to do part of the rescue. Sergeant Nathan Wheelock is in the hangar when he receives the call for an emergency hoist rescue. A hoist rescue is by far the most dangerous portion of what we do, uh, of, of our operation, um, and it is a last resort. It's when you cannot access somebody by ground or by any other means. As they approach, news choppers capture footage of the landscape. It's barely recognizable. When my pilot turned that corner, he turned right to go up what used to be River Road and was now a rushing river itself. There were nine cars trapped in the middle of this water that had absorbed the roadway. It's an extremely dangerous situation for a helicopter rescue, but it's the best chance of saving the stranded victims. And we were five to 10 feet away from trees on one side, a cable dangling between power lines, 
getting really close to an overhang of trees, either of them were extremely dangerous, electricity or a cable getting fouled, one or the other. We were in a very tight location. There's no time to lose. It's a bitter 20 degrees out, and the icy waters are taking a toll. Even worse, the wind from the helicopter and force of the water make it too dangerous to lower anyone down for a rescue assist. So it's up to the mother to get herself and her young son into the basket. Ma'am, just try to stay calm. They're, they're coming to you, okay? Every time the basket touched the water, it was throwing it out away from the car. She was trying to climb through the window and still maintain to get into the basket. So we were very concerned that if she didn't make it into the basket, that she was gonna get washed away. The basket is now covered in ice and slips from the woman's hands every time she tries to grab hold of it. Frustration was starting to set in. Um, not just frustration, uh, but even a little bit of mild hypothermia. I wanted her to grab that basket more than anything. And I wanted her to hold onto it and then climb into it. After several desperate attempts, the mother finally manages to get her son and herself inside. It was an incredible sigh of relief to know I got them. They're mine, and uh, we're going to get them up to the side of the aircraft. But as they're hoisted to the helicopter, Sergeant Wheelock realizes the basket is frozen solid. The mother and son, they come up, uh, get next to the aircraft. Uh, the basket, the hook, uh, the cable, everything is locked with ice. Um, so they're, they're not coming in. I'm not going to try and pull them out of an icy basket and potentially let them slip. So I clip them to the side of the aircraft with a strap. Um, they're covered in ice from their waist down, um, cold, shivering. It's a terrifying ride, but the ordeal ends as the helicopter team touches down and rushes the pair to an ambulance. Of the dozen or so people trapped in their vehicles, everyone survives the disaster. For responders, it's cause for celebration. When the helicopters got there, it was a pretty big relief knowing that they had a chance, because at that point, when we couldn't get to them, I, I just didn't have any idea how we were going to make that rescue.